All right, we're back in Grasshopper. And what are we talking about today? I want to talk I want to spend a few minutes talking about the graph mapper. And uh there's a few things to talk about. I'll make a few different videos, but in this video we're talking about the domains of the graph mapper. We're talking about the fact that the domains are 0 to 1 and 99% of the time I'm just going to leave these domains at 0 to 1 and I'm never going to change them because there's a different way that we can control the domain of our of our data set. Okay? And why is that? Well, I think that graph mapper was developed to be um I think it's developed uh in a way that we wouldn't be changing the domains very often because we have to actually change the domain. We have to go into this little menu and that's not really parametric. Uh, well, I suppose it's parametric, but it's not, uh, it's not the easiest way. Uh, it's not the most efficient way to change this parameter and we don't have any inputs. We can't connect this. There's no inputs on the side of this component for us to connect to other uh, outputs of other components. We can't use sliders or anything. So I don't want you guys going into this menu and changing this stuff. It's not the most efficient workflow. There's a better way. And what it comes down to is the remap numbers component. Okay. So we'll touch on that in one second. But first I want to explain what's going on here. If you're not totally familiar with uh, what I'm saying, when I'm saying domains and all this stuff. So the X and the Y axis, right? Again, this is a graph. We're graphing data. Um, and like we learned in, in, uh, you know, math class, we have the X axis along the bottom and the Y axis, uh, uh, up, uh, on the vertical axis. And if you forget this, just look at, um, you know, just think about what axes you're looking at when you're in plan view, right? You have your X axis on the horizontal and your Y axis is the vertical. If you're looking at this in plan view, we kind of use this convention, uh, in, ma in many different places, right? So when the x axis has domain as a domain of 0 to 1 what that means is that the data is starting at 0 on this side and it's ending at 1 so everything between there is going from uh is a range from 0 to 1 so actually it lines up with the grid perfectly in that this is 0 and then it's 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 etc until we get to 1 okay and the same thing is happening in the y axis and so when we uh, use, so what we can do is we can use the data range component and the data range component actually by default already has a domain of zero to one. So we're already good. We're already off to a good start here, right? Our domain, our range com component already has the domain of zero to one. That's perfect. Um, hold on. Let me turn on these bifocals. There we go. And now you can see what these things are called. So the domain component or the range component has this domain zero to one. And all we have to do is uh, input how many steps we want to take. And you, what you can see actually here is that the steps are actually being mapped across uh, the, the, the graph mapper. And I believe that the red, the red vertical lines representing the steps disappear after we uh, go over like 10. Oh, they just fade away. Okay. I see. There's fade away. And they're kind of gone when once we have like more than 20, uh, 20 uh, data points in the range. Okay. So, but these red lines are representing uh, the point, the the data that's being mapped across the y axis. And then that's being uh, modified using the graph mapper. So, what, how, is, how does that modification technique, uh, how does that modification work? I just, again, I just want to go into this a little bit more in depth than you might be used to. Uh, cause I want to make sure that we really have a good understanding of everything that's going on here to, and that, and I will tell you why we actually don't need to change these domains. Right. Um, so, so let me just explain what's happening here. So when, when we have this data input into the graph mapper, we have this range of numbers from zero to one. It's a, it's a equally spaced, uh, these numbers are equally spaced because it's just a typical range. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And it, coincidentally, I lined it up with the grid just for the sake of clarity. And so every point where this, where this vertical line meets with our graph curve that we, that we have set up, right? Every, every time this vertical line meets up with this curve, we're actually getting 
a y a y value out of this graph mapper okay and i set up a little uh, representation of that concept with this graph that I drew uh, with this script, right? And I can actually modify it just like that. So, so right here you can see, right? This vertical, this vertical sample is at point one, and where it meets with the curve, we're getting a y value of 0 0.045. Let's take a look. If we if we start looking at our values coming out of the graph mapper, here we go. 0 .0 uh, 0 0.045 and then the next value is 0.173 right is this I uh, hope this is clear to you because we're going across to the x value 0.2 and then we go up wherever this vertical sample uh, intersects with this curve then we just take it across to the x-axis and then we're looking at 0 0.073 okay and we and so, and so again, you're going to see that at every single point that that's, that's, that's how these, that's how this set of numbers is uh, coming out of our graph mapper, right? And oftentimes we're going to need a different value of numbers, a different range of numbers. We, we usually are not going to need a range of numbers that's zero to one because this range of numbers could be used for anything, right? In this very, this is sort of an abstract example, but we have these cylinders that are going from zero to a thousand, right? But I'm actually using this this mapper to do that, right? So how does that work? This is going from zero to a thousand, but our graph mapper domain is zero to one. And again, you could go in here and change this Y domain to zero to a thousand if you wanted to achieve that, but you don't have to. And let me show you another example of uh where where we where, again we have this graph mapper zero to one i'll show you this one this is actually affecting the rotation of the script of the the form so if everything is uh going across basically right now the sampler is just not making any rotation because all of our numbers are zero as soon as we start changing this um th this rotation is actually going from even though our graph mapper is exporting zero to one, just like all of our graph mappers, because that's the default, this graph mapper is actually going from zero to 111, and that's that's reflecting in this rotation. So, it, so let's say we wanted to make this form look like this. We know that we need a domain that's bigger than zero to one, because a, a a rotation of zero to one degrees is basically nothing, right? You wouldn't even see it. It would look like this, right? So we know we need a rotation of like zero to 100. And so we can remap this, these numbers, we can remap these numbers zero to one with the remap numbers component. We still want to maintain the, the shape of this sampling, right? We want to maintain the modifications that the graph mapper has made, but we want to change the range. We want to change the domain and the range and the remap numbers component can change the domain, right? And again, our remap numbers component by default comes with a source domain of zero to one. It's perfect. It's it's on our side again. So all of you'll notice that all domains are defaulted to zero to one, and that kind of works in our favor in this way. And so, since our range is zero to one, our graph mapper is zero to one, and our source domain is zero to one, all we have to do is change our target domain. Okay. And if you're not totally familiar with the remap numbers component, I believe I have another video somewhere on YouTube. Just type in remap numbers, parametric fill. Uh, I think I go, I think I discussed it a little bit more. But basically, we have our set of values that's coming out of here. And we have our source domain, which is 0 to 1, which is this, which is the same as our x axis. And then we have our target domain, and that's where we, that's what we want to target. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory in a sense. And so we're actually using the construct domain component to change our target domain. And that's where we change uh, how those numbers are being remapped, okay? So I hope that made it a little more, more clear to you why we don't need to use, why we don't need to change the domain in the graph mapper itself. We can just change the 
domain, the um, we can use the construct domain component and the remap numbers component in order to achieve the uh, domain, the range of numbers that we need to make our uh, to make our model work, right? So these four components, actually, these well, these four components plus the number slider, or however you're creating your target domain, these kind of follow each other around a lot. And you can actually create a snippet of this if you wanted to. Um, should I show you what a snippet is? Okay, here's a little bonus. If you're finding yourself, you're doing this a lot, because I, I, I do this a lot, and honestly, I don't know why I don't have, I should have a snippet of this already. But, so with these five components, you can, you have a fully parametric graph mapper, essentially, right? All you need to do is put in how many things do you want, basically, how many things do you have in your model that you need to modify with the graph mapper and that would be translated into the number of steps right and uh you know if you have a certain number of things we have 11 things here and we're going to use the expression component to subtract the number of things by one because the range component uses steps not it's not the number of numbers it's the number of steps and there's always one less step than there are the number of objects or the number of numbers right so we're going to use the expression x minus 1. I always have it there, right? So we, we have our range component plugging into our graph mapper. We have a remap numbers component and our construct domain component in the slider. And these, these are just going to follow each other around everywhere because now we have inputs for every part of this graph mapper, every, every, uh, every parameter. We have an input for every parameter that we need uh, to, to make our changes most efficiently. And we can actually create a snippet of this using the meta hopper. This is a little, this is a little bit off topic, but it's a little bonus for you guys that made it this far. So if we go, if you have to download meta hopper, you have to install this. But we can go in here and we can actually save the snippet and you can add uh, an icon, um, just like you do with user components with clusters. You can, uh, name it and stuff. Uh, that's not creative. Come on, graph mapping. Uh, graph mapping, graph mapping stuff. GMS, okay. Um, and now we just created uh, a snippet, I think. There we go. Graph mapping stuff, and a snippet is like a cluster, except it's a bunch of components. So I can just drop an entire set of components on here. What happened? Okay, still working. Um, right. So, sni so again, snippet snippets kind of cool. Cause we, cause if, if you're, if you're finding you're using all these five components a lot, which you might be, if you're like me, I use graph mappers all the time and I'm you, I'm almost always using the remap numbers component and the construct domain and range component when I'm using the graph mapper component. So you could just save an entire snippet in here. So you don't have to build that every time. Okay. So that's kind of cool. A little trick for you guys. Okay. I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about in this specific video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Was that somewhat clear? Uh, I'm probably going to come back to this script and talk about a few other things going on here. So uh, I can definitely clarify some of these concepts. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Just throw me a message if you want. Whatever. It's up to you. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And have an amazing day.